why the F-15 terrified the Soviets. Yeah, looking forward to jumping into this. Before we do, like 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you wanted the 80%, I appreciate if you can hit that subscribe button down below. I'm also posting extra content to my Patreon page. Link is in description. But yeah, let's jump into this and check out why the F-15 terrified the Soviets. In July 1967, the Soviet Union reveals what appears to be a new superfighter. It's like a rocket ship. It sets ship. off alarm bells. We currently have oh, okay. no fighter in our operational inventory that could consistently, if successfully, combat the Foxman. It is thought to have multiple air-to-air, long-range, air-to-surface missile capability at a speed of Mark III. With the United States good. and Soviet Union locked in a struggle for air superiority, the Soviets seem to be winning. Oh, Faced really? with the prospect of being outclassed in the skies, the United States would respond by engineering the greatest fighter jet in history. Bro, of course, man. Of course. The, bro, how else? How else are you going to make the greatest fighter jet in history? The Soviets were scared. You know what I mean? They was making some good jets. America was like, you know what? Here we come. Here we come, bro. I love looking at the bottom of them. I'm not going to lie. In the Korean War, early fighter jets like the American F-86 and Soviet MiG-15 squared off in fierce air-to-air -air battles. Both were... Well, that's Soviet a bit unfair. That's a bit... You're telling me the uh, North America jets versus... Um... MiG-15 squared... The MiG-15 <laughs> jets. Off in Look at this. Air to air. Look at this. I can literally see missiles here, right? And then boom. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. How, how, how are they going to shoot them? Their battles. <laughs> what? Both were light, agile jets built for close range dogfighting. But oh, wait. That's the Soviets. But, uh, okay, that makes sense. But by the mid-1950s, new technologies were beginning to radically transform fighter aircraft design. Powerful new radars could detect the enemy from much greater distances, while newly introduced guided missiles could hit targets kilometers away. Oh, wow. Military planners grew convinced that air battles of the future would be fought beyond visual range. Right. The enemy wouldn't be more than a distant blip on a radar screen. And it meant the newest fighter jet, the F-4 Phantom, was no longer light or agile. It was fast, heavily loaded with missiles, and carried a powerful radar. Many believed that dogfighting had become obsolete, but in reality, nothing could be further from the truth. Oh, well, in the why, Vietnam, why am I getting goosebumps on the back of my neck? <laughs> what? The Air Force's new approach was put to the test, but things didn't go as planned. The skies over Vietnam were a chaotic mix of enemy and friendly aircraft and the systems designed to help Air Force pilots identify the enemy proved unreliable, okay. forcing pilots to get in close to visually confirm each target. The whole idea of engaging from a distance fell apart. The right. new F-4 Phantoms were pulled into close quarter dogfights against more agile MiGs, something their pilots had never been trained to do, and the Phantoms' guided missiles proved hopelessly inaccurate. Designed for larger high altitude targets, initially only 14% ever hit anything. Oh, wow. And when the missiles failed, pilots were left defenseless because the F 4 was built without a gun for close combat. The larger, less maneuverable Phantoms with their notoriously smoky engines were easily spotted. The more agile MiGs lured the F 4s in close, knowing they were vulnerable. The F-4 Phantom just barely held its own in this airspace because it is an interceptor used as a fighter, finding it difficult to compete with a fighter designed as a fighter. Oh, wow. American pilots were being downed at alarming rates, and military planners were learning that the age of dogfighting was far from over. This is actually super interesting. Because, like, I know America's going to release the F-15 and become, you know, dominant. But, like, it, I, I haven't seen a video where, like, America is like, at, at the disadvantage. You know what I'm saying? This is really interesting. Air Force planners scrambled to respond, equipping the F-4 with pod-mounted Gatling guns and training pilots to engage the more maneuverable MiGs. Okay. But these were stopgap solutions. What the Air Force really needed was a new dedicated air superiority fighter, and it meant scrapping every one of its earlier concepts for the next generation of fighter aircraft. 
which now looked too large, too heavy, and likely to fare even worse than the Phantom. And they'd have to move quickly, because in 1967, the Soviet Union unveiled a new fighter of their own. Another one? And it looked nothing like the MiGs that F-4 Phantoms were squaring off with in Vietnam. Everything seemed to suggest a fighter built for extreme maneuverability, with twin tails, a massive wingspan, and monstrous engines. Wow. Intelligence experts suspected that the Soviets were using advanced, lightweight materials, along with new radar and weapon systems. A few months later, the Soviets went on a record-setting spree, posting new world speed and altitude records with the new fighter. Official Yo, I ain't gonna lie, the Soviets during this, this time, they're on a roll, bro. ...suspected the worst. We currently have no fighter in our operational inventory that could consistently, if successfully, combat the Fox Pack. If the experience in Vietnam wasn't concerning enough, the Soviet Union now looked ready to unleash a new super fighter. Oh, they're just going crazy. America, release it! <laughs> After spending the better part of two decades building mostly interceptors, fighter bombers, and attack aircraft, the Air Force finally set its sights on building a state-of-the-art air superiority fighter. In 1968, leading U.S. aircraft designers were invited to submit proposals. Their entries would be assessed using a groundbreaking concept called energy maneuverability, a mathematical formula to help define a fighter's total performance in terms of speed, thrust, drag, and weight. In December 1969, the contract to build the new fighter was awarded to McDonnell Douglas. Their design was the product of two and a half million man hours of effort, allowing development to begin immediately. Wow. Here it is. The F-15 Eagle was designed from the ground up for tactical dominance in any airspace. Two afterburning turbofans oh, could unleash what? a massive 48,000 pounds of combined thrust enough power to break the sound barrier even while flying straight up. With a top speed of over Mach 2.5, the F-15 was, was flying it? straight up. With a top speed of over Mach 2.5, the F-15 would be the fastest fighter jet ever produced by the United States. For peak performance, the wow. engines were fitted with variable air intakes. I was going to say, not the fastest jet ride, because I swear the Soviets on the graph had like a Mach 3.0, I'm pretty sure. With a computerized air inlet control system adjusting to ensure optimal airflow at any speed or angle of attack. Where earlier fighters like the F-4 had a reduced wing area for high supersonic speeds, in the F-15, engineers instead opted for low wing loading which combined with a high thrust to weight ratio delivered superior maneuverability. For maximum situational awareness, the cockpit was mounted high in the fuselage with a canopy offering a commanding 360 degree view, Smart. along with a digital heads up display fully integrated with radar and avionics. Eight Sparrow and Sidewinder missiles were mounted under the wings and along the fuselage. But if things got up close and personal, a 20mm Gatling gun could dish out 6,000 rounds a minute. Wow! And for maximum survivability, engineers designed in triple redundant hydraulics, low vulnerability flight controls, and a reinforced airframe. With its combination of speed, power, and agility, the F-15 was ready to earn its place as one of the greatest fighters ever built. I sold! I want one! I want... <laughs> Bro, do you know how scary it would be flying this and you're in this cockpit where you can see around? Bro, I, I feel like I'm falling out. The first prototype was unveiled in June 1972, just three years after McDonnell Douglas was given the go-ahead. The new fighter was put through an extensive testing program and it would have to prove itself against the best of what the Air Force had to offer. Oh, yeah? Up against the heavy F-4 Phantom, the F-15 looked assured and in control, easily making quick work of the interceptor. Hold on! It said, like, it will pull it up against the best what America has to offer, right? But how would you test that? Because you're not going to, like, do an actual fight. Because then you're risking someone's life, you know what I'm saying? They, they, like, how, yeah, how does the testing go about? Like, how would you test, like, your missiles are better than their missiles? Even the smaller, lighter F-5, used like, to simulate more agile make fighters in combat, struggled to shake the larger F-15. Overhead, overhead. Well, I can't do anything about it. Fox 1 on the F-5, nose down. In nearly every engagement, whether beyond visual range or close-in dogfighting, 
The F-15 commanded an overwhelming advantage. Right, With okay, a true cool. air superiority fighter on their hands, the Air Force was ready to send a message to the Soviet Union. Only a year and a half earlier, the Soviets posted new time-to-climb world records with the MiG-25. Right. Now, the F-15 was about to erase them. In 1975, engineers stripped a pre-production F-15 of its non-mission critical components, even removing its paint to make it as light as possible. In the cold... They removed the paint to make it lighter. The paint! ...dense air of North Dakota, the Eagle made a series of climbs from a dead stop rocketing up to altitudes as high as 30 kilometers right to the edge of the Earth's stratosphere. What? Not only did the F-15 beat the MiG... It's, it's a spaceship, bro. It's a, it's a rocket. It's a rocket ship. It's a rocket ship, bro. Its records, it shattered them by more than 25%. The Air what? Force had a winner on their hands, and the F-15 Eagle would come to be recognized as one of the most successful fighter development programs in history. By 1974, the fighter was already in mass production with over 400 early F-15A and B models ordered for the U.S. Air Force. And America's allies were also eager to get their hands on the new jet. The first foreign operator was Israel, beginning in 1976, followed by Japan a couple years later, and Saudi Arabia. And with some of the first F-15s being deployed at West German air bases, right on the Soviet Union's doorstep, it seemed only a matter of time before the new fighter faced off against the MiG-25. Oh, I'm interested. How much did it win by? In 1976, the Americans finally got a first-hand look at the Soviet Union's superfighter. But it wasn't what they were expecting. In September of that year, Lieutenant Viktor Bilyenka, a 29-year-old pilot with the Soviet Air Defense Forces, made a fateful decision to escape the Soviet Union. And he did it okay. by secretly flying his MiG-25 from a Soviet airbase in the Far East to a civilian airport in Japan. After more than a decade shrouded in mystery, the Americans got a chance to examine the Fox Bat down to every last detail. Oh, wow. Although similar in size and appearance, the MiG-25 and F-15 had almost nothing else in common. Built mostly out of heavy nickel-steel alloy, the Fox Bat weighed nearly twice as much as the F-15. The large wings weren't for agility, they were needed just to get the monstrous jet airborne. The what? enormous weight. How was it so fast then if it's so heavy? It meant that the MiG 25 could only pull a 4.5G maneuver. The F 15 was capable of nearly twice that. Most of what the MiG carried was fuel needed to feed its enormous engines. Even so, its combat radius was a mere 300 kilometers. Its avionics used outdated vacuum tubes, and its radar lacked look down capability meaning it couldn't even detect an F-15 flying below its horizon. What? The MiG-25 was anything but the dogfighting monster the Americans had feared. It was purely a high-altitude interceptor, designed to reach incredible speeds to catch enemy bombers. Right. But it wasn't built to do much else. The Soviets had kept the Foxbat's capabilities a closely guarded secret, cashing in on its propaganda value and the alarm it had caused the Americans. But now it was the Soviets' turn to panic. Because in 1976, the Soviet Union had no fighter that stood any chance of surviving a dogfight with an F-15. Uh-oh. They're screwed. F-15s scored their first victories in 1979, when Israeli pilots downed four Syrian MiG-21s in a... Is this the part now where we just see America just absolutely dominating with the F-15s? In 1979, when Israeli pilots downed four Syrian MiG-21s in a single engagement. Over the years, the Eagle would win air battle after air battle, clearing the skies of adversaries almost as a matter of routine. Oh, Today, wow. F-15s have racked up more than 100 victories without a single defeat, a record unmatched by any fighter in history. What? Early F-15A and B models were soon joined by C and D variants, improving on the aircraft's range, payload, and weapon systems. Origi Yo, that's ridiculous, bro. I don't think people will understand how ridiculous that is. The fact that you won 100 and haven't been defeated, you would think like the off chance you would be defeated once, you know what I mean? Not even once. Like, they didn't even get lucky, bro. <laughs> they didn't even... Wow. ...fighter in history. Early F-15A and B models were soon joined by C and D variants, improving on the aircraft's range, payload, and weapon systems. Originally conceived as an air superiority fighter, the F-15 would also be developed into a formidable ground attack aircraft, 
leveraging the fighter's superior range, speed, and payload. Nearly a half Bye. century after taking to the skies, the F-15 remains vital to the U.S. Air Force, with deliveries beginning in 2021 of the F-15EX, a thoroughly modernized replacement for the F-15C. The MiG-25 was never designed to combat an air superiority fighter like the F-15. But in January of 1991, the two Cold War icons came face to face over oh the skies boy. of Baghdad. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Look, look, look this, like this is so much bigger and so much heavier, right? But it actually does go quicker. How? How? Icons came face to face over the skies of Baghdad. And the outcome wasn't what anyone could have predicted. Because what the MiG-25 lacked in maneuverability, it made up for in raw power as the fastest fighter of all time. Okay, right. And the Iraqis would use it to their advantage, devising a daring plan to ambush F-15 Eagles as they patrolled the skies. You can learn about this incredible air battle in my next video coming exclusively to Nebula this month. Oh, I want to see that. Nebula is where you can watch a growing number of exclusive Wait, are you are you really telling me we're not gonna get to see the fight now? Huh? I want to see that fight, bro. What? Anyway, that was a really good video. I enjoyed that a lot. I'm gonna have to check out that fight. Really good video. Enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, make sure to thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.